G'day, welcome back to uh, part two of the new layout on Promovi. Uh, today we're going to put some more units in, we're going to add a fridge, things like that. We're going to put some uh, wall units in, we'll put in um, some tops, and then I'll also show you how we can maybe put an island. We'll see how we get on, um, and also how you put your kick plates in. So let's get started. So where we left off last time, was uh, just putting some units in and we did a little bit of a, um, a move here where we just created a, a corner like that. So what I'm gonna do is, if I look at this, uh, I know on this wall over here, if I just click on it, it'll bring it back up. Um, I'm going to actually put a um, tall like room cupboard, maybe, uh, maybe a two door cupboard on this wall and then I'm gonna put a fridge cross over here so it's opposite this area uh, and we'll see how far we're going to bring this out because I probably am only going to bring it out maybe in line with this over here and uh, we'll put some sort of cupboards here and maybe a tall unit in this corner and maybe make this like a little coffee bar or something like that and then I'm thinking of possibly putting just a little bit of an island here just just so you can see how it can be done we'll put a couple of uh, wall units on as well to give you an idea of how that's created. So I think the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, I'm going to turn, and I'm going to have a look at this wall over here, uh, so next to the door. So I think my best bet is over there. Um, I'm going to probably put a, a side panel in, and then I'm going to put some cupboards in, just so I've got that 16 mil gap. Again, by doing this, if I go back to uh, tools and I go back to my configurator, I'm still using the same configuration that we created. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to catalogs and I'm actually going to lock my catalog in because I'm going to be using that quite a bit so it's going to make it a bit easier for me to work with. Again I can narrow this down a little bit uh, that's about good enough for me I can work over here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, my kitchens and I'm going to go to, let's have a look at pantries, and you'll see that I've got all those there. And then also what I can do is, if I click down, I can go to fillers and ends, but I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go down to CompuServe. And in CompuServe, I'm going to use a side panel. And I'm going to drag the side panel in, attach it to that wall, I'm going to let go, and I'm going to pull the side panel against that wall and drop it down. Once it's in place, I'm going to come across to the right hand side. Um, I'm going to make this a 600 deep. And I'm going to make the height of this, uh, let's make it to start with 2.1, uh, 2250, 22, uh, no, 22150. It's going to be, I don't know why I went 7, I want 22. Maybe 2350. Let's try 23. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just make a copy of this for now. I'm going to say copy and I'm going to paste it somewhere on this wall. Paste, I'm just going to pull it down so it's on the floor. So I've actually got two panels in. Okay, and now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go where it says composite. I'm going to go down to pantries and I'm going to just take this two door 800 unit. I'm going to drag it in and place it on the floor. And at the moment, if I look, I can see I'm 250 off the floor and it tells me over here on the Z as well. So I'm gonna make that 150. So that is already telling me I'm 100 too tall. So these side panels, I now know I can just bring that down. I can just say minus 100 and enter and it'll match up. So I can do the same with that one. Then I know they're all gonna be at the right height. Minus 100, there we go, okay. Now, if I was going to be putting in a fridge over here, which I'm going to, I actually want a side panel uh, against this cupboard. I want to close it off. So I'm going to right click on it again. I'm just going to say copy now that we've got it. And I'm going to say paste. And I'm going to take the side panel and I'm going to just pull it to the floor. Okay, so zero to the floor. It's now made that uh, area for me. I now want to put in a fridge. So I want to put a nice double door fridge in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a decor. So I'm going to come down to decor. I'm going to let that open up. And under uh, where it says 
accessibility, I'm going to click over here and I want to go down to um, kitchen. In kitchen, where it says all, if I click down on there, I'm going to go to home appliances. Okay, under home appliances, where it says all, if I click onto all again and I go uh, down here and I say home appliances and I click down, it should give me there we are, refrigerators. Okay. And the one I'm going to use is this one down here, the side by side. I'm going to use this one over here. I'm just going to take it, drag it and attach it to the wall and then bring it down to the floor. And I'm going to butt it for now up against that cabinet. Okay. This particular fridge is quite a deep fridge. So I'm going to just change that and it takes the handles into account as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make that depth 620. And then what I'm going to do is this fridge, I want to actually move 20 mil, so I've got a 20 mil gap. So I'm just going to come over here, I'm going to type in 20. And with that 20, I'm just going to press the minus red button. And now, now I've got a space between the fridge and my side panel of 120. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this panel, I'm going to butt it up against the fridge. And again, I'm going to move it. So I've got a space of 120. So my fridge is centered between the two panels. I've got 20 millimeters on either side for air cooling and for fitting the fridge and so on. So I'm happy with that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in a top cupboard. So the way to do that is, again, we're going to come back up here. I'm going to go to where it says kitchen. Instead of base unit, I'm going to go down to wall units. And on this one, I'm going to use the small one because I know it's going to be less than 720 high. And now what I want to do is I don't want the corner. I'm going to update we'll that later. And where I've got corners, I'm just going to use wall cabinet. And over here, I think what will probably go nicely is an uplift or I could use a two door uh, cabinet. So let's use a, a two door. I'm going to take that and I'm going to place it. And I'm just going to butt it up against that side panel, okay, like that. So this unit here is against that side wall, okay. If I look down, the height, it's a little bit, it's gonna catch probably the top over here when I move it. So what I'm gonna do is go to properties. At the moment, it's set at a height of 350. I'm gonna actually make that 320, okay. Pull it up to the top, okay, I'm gonna push it up. And if it doesn't want to sometimes move over, we can actually just force it over like that. And we know we've got the space on this side. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to fill this space. So there's a couple of options that we've got. I can just come down here and type in plus 214 and it will fill the space. Or I could right click on it, come down and say maximize distance to the right. And to the right. Usually this works if it's a smaller space. So we'll give it a try, see what it does to the right. And if I click to the right, it's actually filled that space automatically. So it's made my cabinet the right size. I didn't need to actually type in the 214. So I'm happy with that. That's great. That's made it a lot faster. And now what I'm going to do is I want to move this forward. It's 350. I'm going to move this if it's uh, 620 to the front. Um, we can then go to move. So I'm going to make that um, 240, Let's see where that comes. And I'm going to press the green minus. And we can just check, it's a little bit too much. So now what I can do is I can go back by looking at it as about 10 millimeters. So if I go back, I can line it up like that. Onto the unit. So I'm happy with that. There's my top unit. Now I could make this, it, I've got a 30 mil gap. So we could actually make that a little bit tighter. So what we could do is we could say here, make that 340 and enter and it'll go up and we can literally just pull it down and it'll be in the right spot for us. Perfect. Okay, so there we are. We've got our fridge unit in and we've got a tall pantry unit. Now maybe we just want to put in a one door over here. So what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna take the side panel, I'm gonna make a copy of it because I know I'm gonna use it again pull it down here that's fine and then kind of across here I'm going to go back to pantries and let's put a 300 but I don't want a, a 300 let's make it a 500 one door 
and um, maybe we should actually use a wired rack one. No, no, we'll just use a stand. I'm going to pull it in. Again, I can drop it down, get down to my 150, or if, if I'm not quite sure, I can literally just place it and then I can check it afterwards. There we are, 150, we're in, that's perfect. Okay. And now I can take the side panel, again, just pull it up, butt it up, and there's my side wall. I'm quite happy with that done. Okay. So that is quite easy and painless. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is on this section, um, I want to actually just put um, maybe a cupboard, not all the way in because obviously of the window. So we're going to put a cupboard in here and I'm just going to run two cupboards and maybe a shelf up to this edge of this corner over here. So what we can do, we can come along, I'm going to go again, I'm going to go to wall units. I'm going to use high line ones here. So on the wall units, I can click down and I can say wall and where it says wall cabinets, uh, let's have a look here. I want to go wall cabinets. Uh, actually, I'm going to use high wall cabinets. Don't need the corner. I'm just going to use the standard. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a 800 onto that wall okay. uh, like that and I'm going to snap that down. Okay. I want about 516 there. I want a space because of the window and everything else but I also might want to try and line it up a little bit closer to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make that uh, 5 Make it 516, okay. and then I'm going to add another 16, so I'm going to say plus 16, because I'm going to put a side panel on. So that will give me about the lineup that I'm looking for there. I've got a 600 on this side, I'm going to leave that because I'm going to put some open shelving in there. So now what I want to do is I want to obviously put a side panel. So again, to do side panels, you're going to come down and under kitchen, again we're still on kitchen, we're going to come down to composite. And We've got different ones here. We can go down and we've got different types of panels. I'm going to, there's some more side panels here. I can click on side panel. I can use a flat. This is if you want to match the shape of your doors. You can drop your door shape side panel in as well. But we're going to use a standard. So I'm just going to come up to the top. So it looks like this, I'm just going to use a side panel like that, and I'm going to pull it in onto the wall and next to the unit. Now I know this particular unit is 720, oh no, these are the tall ones, sorry 1040, sorry my bad, so it's going to be 1040, okay, uh, I know it's going to be a 16 millimeter, uh, yes, and I want to make that at 350, 370. Okay, pull that down so it matches up. And I've got my side panel in. The only thing is that I have to do, because I've changed the size, just bring it out and put it in like that, and you'll see that it's perfect. Now while that's highlighted, I'm literally just going to copy it, and I'm going to duplicate it on this wall over here. And while it's duplicated, I can literally just drag it and I can just pull it onto the other unit like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put some open shelves here. It's really just to show you all the different options that you've actually got and what you can do. So to do shelving, again, you can have a look under uh, kitchen. You go over here and you're going to see one called, let's have a look. With this new system that they've done, they've changed it slightly. There's your uh, top, uh, so that's tops and shelves. I actually want them as shelves. I'm going to click on the shelf, and I'm just going to take a linear shelf like this. Okay, and I'm going to pull that shelf onto this wall, and you'll see that it automatically puts it in quite big, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. We're going to now change that to. We're going to take it back slightly. I'm not going to max it up to the, the cupboard. So let's make that a 320. Okay. I don't want it to actually touch the edge of the wall. So I'm just going to make this 600. Okay. And I'm going to pull this down because I want it to start from the bottom like that. Okay. 
And now what I want to do is maybe those shelves need to be a bit thicker. So let's make those shelves 32. Okay. And now I want to make a couple. I want to put another three in here. Okay. So what I can do is I can go to an array at the top here. I've got my shelf selected. And by doing this, you'll see if I put two there, you'll see it's giving me a green key outline. So I'm going to put three in. We're going to move those up. I'm going to make them, let's see what 300 will look like. Yep, I think that will work for us. And I can insert. And I've got my shelves. And now what I can do is later on, I can change these colors of these shelves if I want to, things like that. Okay. So I've got some shelves in. On this side, I'm going to put another cupboard in, and I'm just going to duplicate this cupboard. So I'm going to right click, I'm just going to say duplicate. And it will automatically duplicate the cupboard for me. Okay. So it's duplicated it over here. I could literally move this cupboard, I can turn it, but I'm happy with the way that is, so that's fine. I can just say OK. And on this side, we've got a bit of a space here. So I'm going to copy this panel. Click it onto this wall, and I'm going to say paste. And I'm going to pull this panel down like that. Because I'm going to put a tall unit in here. So what we're going to do is go back to kitchen, we're going to go to a pantry. Uh, it's not really overly big, but I'm going to put in a 800. Maybe I should put one with a draw in. Let's have a think. Let's put in this one here that's got two drawers. Okay. That gives me a 761 space, which is fine. That'll give me enough space to put a nice little cupboard or something in there. Um, but we're going to have a bit of a play here. So what I'm going to do is, again, because I've already got it selected, I can just say paste. That's going to be my side panel, like that. And now over here, I actually want to put in, in the kitchen, I want to go back to base cabinets. I want to go to normal cabinets. Cabinets. And I'm going to put in a trash can. And I'm going to put the trash can in, and I'm going to just butt it up like that. That gives me a little bit of a space here. Now I have a, um, a unit that looks a little bit like a can holder, but it can be used for uh, spices, whatever you want. So I'm going to use it as if it's going to be for my coffee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop it in like that. And again, I'm going to tell the program to fill that space. Now it's 145. Now there's two ways. Again, I can right click, I can come down to maximize then to the right. But I'm going to show you another way of doing it. So while I've got that, while it's set up here at 200, I can come to where that 200 is. I can say plus 145 and enter. And it'll automatically fill that space. So depending on what you want to do, I can actually take that, so we'll do it again, plus 145, enter. That way you can see how it fills in the space. Now let's say for instance I want to put some cupboards along here, and then I want to put some shelves in between those cupboards here, uh, and maybe a, a cupboard across the top, and we can make this uh, like a little uh, coffee bar or something like that. What I can do is I can take this cupboard over here, or the side panel, shall I say, say copy. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to paste it over here. It doesn't matter where it is for now, I'm just going to paste it and I'm going to paste another one. And this one I want to put to the edge over here. And again, I can set this to whatever height that I want. Okay? So once I've actually placed that, I can take it and I can say, okay, I want that at one, uh, four, seven, and I can put it in and I can just check across here that it's there. And now that's ready for me to put some cupboards in. So let's put some units in. So we're gonna do wall cabinets. Uh, so let's do, um, let's do highlight. We'll do some highlight cupboards, wall units. And I'm gonna put it in 800 again. Snap it in like that. And then maybe what we can do is 
we could possibly put in, let's have a look here, there we've got a 400 plus 345, so if I put an 800 in and then we remove 55, so we'll do that as well, so I'm going to put a 800 in. Minus 55. And I pull that across. Okay. I can now take this unit and just push it in like that. And now maybe I actually want this to be all in line like that, quite low. So what I can do is, um, I know from the top at the moment, and from the bottom I've got 600, so let's just make that 500. So from here, I know I've got 350, so I can just make this top, instead of 190, down the bottom, over here, I can just make that 350, and it'll all marry up. So those cupboards will all match. Take my side panel, run it down, line it up. Okay. And I'm gonna need another side panel so we can save paste, and I want another side panel so that it looks nice when I put my shelving in in between. Now we're going to put a little cupboard in between there. So again, we're going to use wall cabinet, which is the basic ones. I'm going to come in and say wall cabinet. And I know it's a 775 gap. So on this one, I'm actually going to use the same thing, but I'm going to say 700. I'm going to butt it up. And again, I'm just going to right click maximum width to the right and it will fill that space for me. Okay. And then in between here I can actually put a shelf if I want to. So if I go back in and I can go to tops and shelves. Um, and that's a shelf. I can pull in a linear shelf. And again, don't worry that it comes up too big, it's just so that you can adapt it. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make that 350, like that. And I maybe don't want it all the way to the bottom, I maybe want it there. And eventually these I will probably end up making glass, for instance. So we can go again to Array. I'm going to come over here, and on this one I just need one extra. I'm going to make that 400. Click on there, if you'll see it's too far. Let's make that 300. And I can live with that one and we'll put that in there like that. Okay. At the moment, you'll see I haven't put any tops on that in. We're going to do that later with the kick plates. Um, the next job that I want to put in, I just want to make a, um, let's see that this one here is not at the right height. And this is something else that you'll, you'll pick up quite quickly. When you are uh, um, using the 3D, you'll find very quickly that it's very easy to see if something's not lined up or something's not in the right place. You can literally just see it by looking at it and you'll know when to fill things and close things and things like that. Okay. So maybe on this one, we should also make that 350 down. Let's do, let's do them all exactly the same. Uh, let's go 350. And then these we can also just move down uh, 350. So everything will match. I just want to make everything match for now. 350. So everything will match around as we're looking at it. Okay. So what we're going to do now um, in this area, uh, I'm going to just build a small island unit just to show you how you could build an island unit, okay? I mean, we're not making a, an amazing kitchen, it's just to give you ideas of all the different options that are available for you to be able to play around with. So we're going to build the island unit, we're then going to, I'm going to then show you how you can add your colors, uh, materials to the, um, to the system once we put in our worktops and kick plates and then we're going to show you how to add handles and then that will be uh, part two done 
so that you can just get a feel of how everything works. So let's put in a couple of cabinets to make an island unit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go again back to kitchen. I'm going to go down to base units and I'm going to go down to the standard cabinetry. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in an 800 unit onto the floor. And you'll see when I bring a cabinet in directly onto the floor, it automatically will sit flush on the floor at a zero uh, rating. So the height will be zero. If you look over here, where I'm highlighting now, that is zero. So again, I can make that one 50 and the cabinet will move up. Now, there's a couple of ways of moving this cabinet. You could manually go in and say, move and rotate up here and you can rotate the unit around and things like that. But there is an easier way when you first place a cabinet. If you press your shift button and your left mouse button, you can spin it around. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin it around because we're going to make an island in front of this section over here. So I'm going to place this. I actually want this around about, see down here, 1142. I actually want to make that, uh, let's say, a meter and 20. So I've got a meter from there, and then when I do my 20 mil overhang for my top, I'll have a meter space, which is fine. That, that suits me down to the ground. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in another cabinet. And let's bring in a draw unit, because we haven't put any in. So under cabinets, I can go down to drawers. And let's put in a draw unit. So I'm gonna put in a standard. Let's have a look here. Let's bring in this three door. Okay. I'm gonna bring it in. And again, I'm gonna just let go. And you'll see it'll be placed on the floor. I can now make that 150 and with the shift button pressed and my left mouse button I can rotate it and now I can actually once I've rotated it in the position I want I can let go and I can now move this and butt it up automatically to that unit. Okay, so if I spin around you'll see now that I'm already starting to build my unit. Now let's say for instance I want to move both these units 16 mil more this way because I maybe want to put a, a side panel here which we didn't think of. And now if you've got three or four or five cabinets it can be a bit of a pain to move each one at a time. So press your control button down and so basically if I've got this one selected hold your control button down and click this one as well. Now those two are selected together and I can go to the move tool and I can say I want them to be moved 16 and I'm going to say plus button and it'll move both of those cabinets together even though I haven't grouped them so they're not a, they're not attached to you uh, as, as one group by using the control button I can select multiple units and move them in one go okay so that makes it a lot easier okay. what I can do is like we did with this one I could right click on this and I can say duplicate now obviously when it duplicates, it's going to put it right next to it and it's inside that cupboard. But that's fine because there's two ways. I can literally just come here and move it or I can come across over here and if I click on the unit, I can actually move it around. Okay, depending on which way I want to go and I could also move it out. Okay. Once I say OK, I can take that unit and I can manually position it and snap it together. If you look, you'll see that I'm not actually lined up, so I can actually move. And what happens is you just move it back and forth and it will snap together. Okay. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to put another small unit and then I'll put a side panel on the side panel. And what I'm going to do then is on this side, I'm going to make a curved like breakfast bar type thing. Okay. So let's put in another draw unit. So I let go, it places it, hold my shift button down, and I can rotate it. Now, even though I haven't made this 150 yet off the floor, I can still move this over and butt it up. It will still allow me to do that. But if you zoom in, you'll see that it's obviously at the wrong, wrong position. Okay, so now if I go 150, and now I can set it up, it'll snap together. 
And now I'm going to take this side panel, I'm going to copy it that we made in the last one. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste it on the floor. And yes, you're going to see it's in the wrong direction, but if I hold my shift button, again, I can just swivel it around to get it to where I want it. And I can bring it in, snap it, and I actually am going to make that a little bit longer, which is fine because I want to make this in because I'm going to put a panel across here. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say paste. And again, there's our side panel. And again, I just hold my shift button down and I can rotate it to get it level. And I can bring it in and I can snap it to where I want it. So now I've done my two side panels. I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm now going to put a panel on the back here. Now this can come a little bit tricky because if I right click and I say paste, you're going to say, oh great, I've got a panel. I can butt it up and I can just make it whatever length it needs to be. The problem that I have with that is Promovi is clever enough to know which direction your panel is and it won't allow me to go further than say 1.8 if it's on a vertical and 2.37 on, on the horizontal. So at the moment, the program doesn't actually know which way around we've actually got this. So if I pull it, it's going to allow me to go to 183, but it won't let me go any further. And you'll see it's too short. Okay. So what we have to do is we'll have to rotate it 90 degrees. Now by pressing on these, you'll see how it's going to rotate, depending on which one you want, on how it's going to rotate. Now, if you've rotated it like I've just done with the red and it's rotated it sideways, when I come back here and I make that zero, it's going to sit on the floor correctly. The height now is actually this direction. So we don't want that to be the height. We want this one to be the height. So we're going to make that one 870. Okay. And now what I can do is I can literally come in and I can place that panel like we've just done onto the system. And I can take this and I can start pulling it. And I'm going to pull it all the way along until it matches. And there I've got my side panels set up. So my back panel is in, my uh, units are in, and everything is done the way that I want it. Okay. So now I'm going to unpin this for now but I want that to go back. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put in our worktop and we're going to put in some kick plates. Now I'm going to use the automatic one initially and then I'm going to do some work on those particular um, worktops. So to do that, we're going to come across, we're going to go to where it says automatic at the side, it's going to pop it out. I'm going to go to the second function of the NTO up here and over here I'm going to use kick plate and I'm going to use top. And I'm just going to say insert. You can insert at the top here or at the bottom. You'll also see we've got them broken up into bedroom, bathroom, and if I keep going down, you'll have lounge and study and things like that. So we're doing it in the kitchen because these are all kitchen units. And I'm going to say insert. It's now calculated in all the kick plates and everything like that. So I click down back into the drawing. You're going to see that I've got all my kick plates are in and I've got all my tops in. Now there is a little bit of an issue here. I didn't ask for it to put tops down those sides because it automatically assumes with them being side panels they have to have a top on it. So what I'm going to do is on these, this is why I say there's a little bit of work to do. I'm just going to delete by double clicking on them so that I don't have any funny tops that I don't want, or any pieces that I don't want. Okay? And if you have a look around, you'll see now everywhere else looks to be correct. This one's got a top on it, okay? But it's it's wrong. I don't want that top, so I can double click on it and I'm just gonna delete it. The corner, it hasn't put a top in, but we'll fix that in a minute, because I've told the program that I don't want a top, but the same as this one, and take that piece out. Uh, I don't want a top cut out of a square if I'm using granite or something like that because I'm going to have a 600 cross. 
was out of wood and you were using a normal square wood piece, it would then put a square piece in here and your cutout would be across this piece here. Okay, so I've got my, my um, tops in. The first thing that I can do is I could change the colors now, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do first do is I'm going to do a bit of uh, manual editing on the tops the way that I want it. So what I'm going to do is on this top, I'm going to click on it so it's highlighted and then I'll right click and I come down and I say edit over here. It's going to pull this up. I'm going to try and move this to the side over here so you can possibly, once I've done it, you'll see it much quicker how it's, how it's working out. So if I make this a little bit bigger so we're going to be able to see what we're doing. Okay, and I'll zoom out a little bit. What's going to happen here is if I click on this top, that's this piece over here. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to line this top with this top because this top I'm going to pull. Or what I could do is I'm just going to take this all the way to the back. So I can just take this node and I can pull it all the way to the back and it's going to snap where I want it. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to pull it. And by making sure that the lines are straight, I know that that's 600 from there to there. Before I do that end, I'm going to click on this top and I'm just going to pull it in and I'm going to snap it to that top. So it's going to make a join there for me. Okay. And on this side, all I want to do is I want it to actually line up with this outer top. Make sure it's nicely lined up like that. And now when I come over to this side, I need to extend this piece. So the first thing I'm going to do is, because it's right near the door, I actually want it to be just on the side panel, on the edge. I'm not going to make an overhang there. Okay. This one is all fine. Let's fit it in fine. And now we've got our great looking worktop or island unit. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. I'm going to click on the island unit. And the first thing I want to do is I just want to put it to match the panels. Okay, come up to the top and I'm going to match the panels that are there that I can see. Pull that one straight. I know that it's going to be at 600. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, now that I've got that set up, I want to do a couple of things. By clicking on this, I want to extend this 20 mil out. So on this side, I can come here and it will say offset. And I'm going to make that 20 mil. Now when I come back over here, wherever that green arrow is pointing, is the direction that's going to make it 20 mil. So I want it to come out 20 mil, so that arrow, green arrow is pointing out, down. I click on it and it's made it 20 mil. Now I'm going to do 300. And I want the 300 from this side to come out for like a breakfast bowl. So again, the arrow is pointing away. I click on it, it's going to make that 300. Okay. And on this end, we're just going to do something a little bit silly. I'm literally just going to take this central piece and I just want to pull a little bit of a shape here to make it look a little bit different. I'm going to make it like that. I'm going to say, okay. You'll see everything has changed, everything is fitted in. And then our island is fitted like that. Okay. Our kick plates are already in, and they're all in everywhere we needed them. Automatically, we didn't have to do anything. So at the moment, we've got our kick plates in, we've got our tops in, and we've got the shelves and things like that we've got. So, the next job that we're gonna do quickly is we're going to change the color of the units and we're going to change the worktop color. Now, how do you do that? Well, it's very simple. Just click somewhere on one of the uh, on one of the units and come up to where it says models. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So everything inside here for carcasses and things, you'll find the information listed here. So let's start off with the tops. If I come down to tops, I've got a flat top, which is fine. At the moment, it's granite yellow, but let's change that. And let's take it down to say Caesar stone. 
And on Caesar stone, I'm going to put in a colour. Make something that looks a little bit uh, different. Let's see what we can use. Oh, I'm trying something a little bit different. I don't want jet black. Okay, let's say grey. So if I click on the grey, you'll see that it's already changed everything to grey for me. The next thing that I want to do um, is I want to actually pull in over here. Um, I want to change the colors of the doors and I maybe want to change the doors so on this side color white that's the bodies all the bodies of the units the doors here is straight I'm going to say show all okay. and I can have a look and see which types of doors that I want um, again I can go back and forward I can decide how I want to do the doors so I could go wood doors it's going to give me all the different doors down here and give me the different patterns but i know for instance i'm going to use a shaker door and i'm going to come down and i'm going to use the v groove shaker apply and say okay it's already going to start changing them okay and you'll see that it's changed all my doors to shaker doors okay the only thing it hasn't changed is my drawers. So my drawers are a separate section. So if I come further down and you'll see here, front one handle, that's the drawer. So now I want to change the drawers. And I'm going to use, let's use something that's going to look similar. There's the V-groove. And when I say OK, what will happen is all my drawers have now changed to those as well. So now my doors are chosen. How do I change color? So again, up here, you're going to see uh, V groove white. So I'm going to click on that and we're going to change the color. So if I go to color and I'm going to go to white, for instance, on the shaker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to colors and you'll see it will bring up the different colors. So if I go to PG Bison, let's say we want to change this and we're going to use, choose a color that's a little bit different. I'm going to use this storm gray. Oh no, let's give it a bit of a contrast. Let's use this blue. So if I click on that, what it's going to do is it's going to change all my cupboards, all my doors to that color. Okay. So we're going to now know that Corona Blue is the color for all our doors. Now, what will happen is if I turn here, you'll see even my drawers have changed color, which is perfect. It's not a problem at all. I want that. And now what I'm going to do is I want to have a look further down and I want to see here, see edge banding on the bodies. We're going to change that as well. Now, what this is going to allow us to do by changing this, it's going to show you how the edging is going to look. Okay, so I'm going to come up here. the color. So if I go to a cupboard and I open that door, you're going to see that all my edging is correct on my door. So it doesn't matter which one we go into, you'll see that your, your edging and everything is going to be correct. So even if we open the drawers and we stagger them, you'll see that all your edging, depending on how you set your edging up, will be in the right place. Okay, so you can actually decide um, how you want. You could have two-tone edging, you could do whatever you want, it will allow you to do it. And this is all done under models. Now, what you will see is, uh, 
it's done edging for engines on this on here but it hasn't filled those in and that's only because uh, it assumes that that's part of the carcass okay so what we can do if we want to change these to the same color which i'm not i'm going to change these into wood but just to show you um, i'll do it on the end panels so the way that i do my end panels i will click on the end panel and i'll click here where it says select and i'm going to actually make that whole end panel the color that i want okay so we know it's going to be this one i'm going to click and that whole end panel now all the edges and everything are correct this one over here is going to be the same, still under selection, and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. And this way, if you're using um, the cutting program from Promobi, it knows exactly what panels or what. It knows how to do the board optimizing. It knows when it does that, that it's got it in the correct direction. It also is going to know that how many boards it's going to need of that particular material. So you'll see as I go along, Again, as soon as I click on it, I can go in and I can change all these. Okay, I'm going to do them all quickly. It doesn't take long. And even the one on the side here, because you can see the edge, I'm going to make that a color as well. Don't worry about the kick plates yet, we're going to change those. So we'll do those in a minute. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with those. And we're going to go down to cover blue. And on this one is also a side panel. So again, same thing, same principle. And the reason I'm doing this rather than just using the paint tool is the paint tool won't give the cutting program the correct information. It'll make the color look right if you just want to do it for rendering. But if you are going to send it to a cutting program, it needs to know that that whole panel, what the color that panel is and so forth. Um, if you just use the color brush, which you can, it's still going to show on the cutting program that it's just a white panel with edging. So it's always best if you're going to be doing a cutting list or anything like that to actually select your side panels. and finish them off correctly in that way all your cuts and everything else on your boards will be correct okay. so i think the last ones that i've got to do if we go back are going to be the ones that are on here now let's say for instance on these ones i actually don't want them to be that cap of blue okay I want those to be something else. Now, something else I've just noticed, remember we put a filler piece in here. So I can click on that filler piece and that will also allow me to use the selection tool and I can put it all in so that it all matches. Okay. So what we're going to do now is let's, let's be a little bit daring here. Let's change this. I'm going to make this panel. Let's change this whole panel to a wood. Let's say we want to make that an oak. Um, and I want to put the oak in that direction like that. You'll see it's changed all the edging for me to the oak. Now let's say these two side panels I also want as oak. Again I can come down, I can go on and I can say oak and you'll see that it changes each one and everything that I need so that it makes it look with the side edging side panels, the edging, everything will look correct. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I want to change, I want to put a tile on the floor and I'm going to, before I come up and change these uh, units up here, I want to put a tile on the floor and I want to change the kick plates. So how do I do that? Very simple, go back to your catalog, go to materials and under materials you can choose what you want. So if I've got a floor I'm going to take this tile, uh, let's use this tile, uh, lighter tile, and I'm just going to drag it onto the floor and there you go. Okay, so let's put my tiles in. Now my kick plates, what I want to do there is I actually want to change those. Uh, let's have a look here. If I go to, let's have a look. I want to actually make those like a metal. So I'm going to make those like a 
stainless steel or brushed stainless steel or I can make them champagne sort of color or graphite. I think a graphite would actually look quite nice. So what I can do is I can take that graphite and I can actually place it onto the unit. And now I've got a paintbrush. I can literally just tell it where I want the graphite to be. So I'm going to click on all my kick plates go around and I'm going to make sure that all my kick plates are going to look the same. There we go. Once you've done this, please remember to come back and actually just choose your uh, select tool or your move tool so that you don't have the paintbrush anymore because anything that you click with the paintbrush will turn to the material color that you've chosen. Okay, so that's something that's uh, <laughs> Something that's quite important to do. So let's say on here, I wanted these shelves to match the wood over here. I can again, click on there, go up to models, say select, and I can change it here, go to wood. Let's go back onto oak. And I want all these to be oak. Okay. So again, I can just do that like that. That's fine. Okay. And if I make them all oak, then I've got my oak shelves. Now let's say for instance on this bit over here, I want these to be glass. Now when you go in your selection, you're not going to find glass here. It doesn't pull up as, as a color, so it won't automatically allow you to do it. So the way to do this is you would come back to your catalog, you go to materials, and under materials you can find glass. So you just have to go through until you find where it would say glass, which is down here. And now you can choose the color or what you actually want on the glass. So let's say I want to use a colored glass, not a royal blue, but maybe something like a colored light blue, something like that. I can take that color and I can drop it onto the unit like that. The N, I would also click on to make sure that it's complete glass. Okay, so I'm going to do the same up here, and then the whole thing is glass. So that comes in handy, again, go back to my move tool. Uh, that comes in handy later on when we're going to start putting renders and stuff like that, and I'm going to do some backsplashes and all those sort of things. It's going to give you an idea of how the kitchen is going to start to look. We are going to stop it here. I don't want it to be too long. Uh, as I say, this is uh, now going to be training number two. Thank you very much, and I uh, hope to see you on the next one. Just remember, when you finish doing a job, before I go home, just remember to go and do a save, so that you've saved everything that you've done. Even though it's got automatic saves, it's always good to go back and do a save.